I'm just going to start with the first question. Um, whoever wants to answer it can take it away. Um, want to start with a, a very important first question and is one that I think takes a little bit of time to uh, learn at college. But um, in school, how do you manage your time and responsibilities? Yeah, I can answer this first if you want me to start. Yeah, go for it. Yeah, so I actually work for Everest Insurance um, and I've worked there since my first internship my sophomore year. Um, so I do claims operations and also underwriting. Um, so I think what's helped me a lot is if you stay busy, you have a lot more responsibilities and you don't have time to slack around. Um, that's kind of like what I've learned over my college experience. Just it, the more time you have, the more time you have to slack off. So just keeping busy and writing everything down and staying on top of your work. It's just checking your emails daily. That's kind of um, how you stay on top of things. Yeah, uh, I can go next here. I, so one of the biggest things that I noticed was you have, you just have so much more time mm -hmm. than in high school and you just have to allocate it differently. Like, for example, in high school, you're there from like eight to three and you play a sport, you're there until 5.36 and then you have two hours of homework. Um, so that's, I mean, that's a full eight to eight day and college you'll have you know, two classes, hour and a half. So you have like three hours of class a day and uh, you have the whole day open. So you, you want to keep busy as much as possible so you don't fall into a whole, you know, join clubs, um, just go, you know, go out, meet people. Um, and just, you have so much time on your hands, the world at your fingertips, basically. So make the most of it. Yeah, Ryan, to kind of go off of that with all that free time, because like you said, it's very different than in high school where it's that solid eight to three time span, you're committed to school. How did you get yourself into this mindset of during my off time, I'm still going to be organized and allow myself to do the work? Like, how did you enter into that mindset when you started college? Um, when I started, it's, I'm going to be honest, it was really weird. Um, and you, you do get into a routine. And once you find that routine, that's key. Um, I, I just like my freshman year, I think back and I just kind of was all over the place doing different things, but it, it's best to establish a routine, you know, go to the gym, um, you, you, do, you, you know, take a look if your classes, a lot of times you won't have homework, but what the, the thing is with, with college is you have projects essentially that you have to manage over the span of like a month or a couple of weeks or whatnot. Um, so you have to keep up with those, uh, a lot of group work. So, you know, you're, you're constantly talking to your classmates and whatnot, but um, I, I think establishing a routine is key because high school, you, you're forced into a routine, college, you have to figure one out essentially. That's great, yeah. Anybody else on organization? Has anyone had the experience of over committing themselves and having to like pare down what, what you were involved in? I know that can be a problem sometimes when they overcommit. Um, for me, this past year was, in the beginning was challenging. I was working um, in the COVID intensive care unit. I was doing my clinical rotations. I was a teaching assistant and I was tutoring on top of my classes. So it could be hard at times, but also, like everyone was saying, it kind of made it easier for me because freshman year, I just had endless free time. So instead of doing work every single day, because I never, I've never had homework as a nursing major, it's only like you have four exams and that's it. That determines how you do like in the course. So I'd always wait until the day before to start studying too. So how, taking on more made it that I had to study like an hour every day rather than cram the night before. So I think that the best thing to do is kind of block out chunks of time. I think that was what works best for me was getting like an agenda and literally saying like, from this time to this time, I go to the gym, from this time to this time, I've worked from this time to this time, I'm in the hospital, from this time to this time, I'm all, I'll actually study. And it does make it a lot easier because you're not really used to having all the free time so that by blocking out chunks and like taking on new projects, 
you can kind of keep yourself from just realizing that you've been sitting like on the couch watching TV all day. We have a good question from the audience that you might want to all respond to. What would you say was the largest change from high school to college? You want to just go around and kind of give your own opinion about that answer. Um, I can go for this one. Um, I think that for me, the biggest change wasn't necessarily um, the amount of homework and studying. It was just the type and like the frequency that was assigned. Because uh, I forget who uh, spoke on it before, but um, it's not like you have, you know, like a worksheet every night. It's not it's like every month you're going to have to submit like a 10 page essay type thing. Or, you know, every month you're going to have an exam. And, you know, you just got to keep on top of doing your stuff with that. So that was a pretty huge change for me. I think uh, I'd say is that you're kind of your own boss when it comes to college. Um, when it comes to homework, you have to set aside time to do it yourself. Like you have to go to bed the time that you set. You have to go and make yourself eat food as well. That's something people forget is they will skip lunch, they'll skip breakfast. Um, but yeah, you really got to be in charge of what you're doing and um, hold yourself accountable throughout college. That's something that is happening in college that high school kind of you have your parents to rely on or high school teachers um, or curricular activities and stuff. So, yeah. Yeah, I think for me, um, I did a dual enrollment. So my senior year, I would go to high school, you know, where he's um, until 10 a.m. And then I would go to RVCC and I took a whole semester there as well. Um, which transferred in. So I was already, you know, into my major because I had my gen eds done. Um, so I had to jump on, you know, the wagon a little bit quicker. Um, and some people come in undecided and I didn't decide to do that. I decided to do risk management insurance. So for me, all my friends were kind of behind. Um, so I jumped directly into my major and I had to kind of get over the social aspect of it and really focus on school because, you know, when you enter into college, it's all gen eds and things that everyone has to take at the same time. But since I was a little bit of ahead, I kind of missed that. So I think that that was um, the largest change and difference for me entering. What about John, any response to that one? Uh, yeah, I would say it's probably just like a little bit like what Matt said is like kind of being your own boss. Um, like I feel like in high school, people are kind of there to like hold your hand a little bit. And that's not really the case in college. You kind of have to just, you know, figure stuff out like on your own. Um, and then Connor said too about like going to bed at a certain time and like planning out your week um, where like I had like a couple of friends. So like I knew like if I hung out with them, like I probably wasn't going to be, you know, getting up to like a whole lot of schoolwork. And I knew it was probably going to be like more like downtime. So just kind of planning out like when to be with those people, when to be with uh, like my friends, like we had like the study group and stuff like that, um, but just really like kind of making college like your own um, and, you know, not really have anyone to like kind of push you along, so to speak, or hold your hand through things. Another one that hasn't really been touched on is, is uh, people. Um, you know, you go to high school and you see the same 200, depending on your grade, but 200 people, 250 people a day. And college, there's, um, I went to a small school. I mean, TCNJ has like 8,000 total or something like that, which I mean, is small for college, but seems massive coming out of Voorhees. And um, you just meet so many different types of people and building relationships is really key for when, for when you graduate and move on and not, not just teachers necessarily but students and uh it's definitely harder i would say to to build relationships with your with your team with your professors um just because in high school you you see this the same teachers every day so it, you know they they really get to know you but in college you have to make a point to introduce yourself stand out in a way so so you can actually build your really a relationship with those professors because That'll definitely help you in the long run. I ended up getting the job from one of my professors, so it, it'll help you. Yeah, I was just going to say, too, going off of what um, Ryan just said, too, 
it's really important. I think going into college, I was very nervous that I wasn't going to have the same connection with my teachers as I did um, at or in high school to college because going to a bigger school is kind of scary when it comes to that stuff. But um, I was very fortunate, you know, to I St. Joe's is only about I, th I think it's like under 6,000. So, I mean, it's bigger than TCNJ, but I think that it's important to have that one-on-one -on -one connection with your professors um, just because you can build those relationships. You can network a lot better. You know, a lot of times they have a lot of more experiences like than you think. I, since I'm insurance, my professors and my advisors all have worked in the insurance industry for over 20, 30 years. So they have way more experience and connections. Um, so that's kind of how you build your network yourself and 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 get um, going in college. So actually to go off that question, I think that's a really good point about making connections with your professors because you know in, in high school when you have your teachers, you see the same people all the time, you know, it's smaller class sizes, all those things. So what advice would you give to students entering into college on how to make those connections with professors? Like what would you say is the best way to form those connections with your professors and to start that contact? Yeah, so I'm in, um, it's a frat, but it's not, I don't know why they call it. It's called GIS, um, Gamma Iota Sigma. And basically it's purely networking. So we have business professionals come in from all different insurance industries. Um, and, you know, it's not just for risk management insurance majors, but it's, I'm going to call it a club because it's more of a club than um, a frat. And they just come in, they network so will have, let's say, Merck, which is a huge, huge company, they'll come in and they'll have, you know, um, some managers or underwriters um, come in and like talk about their experience and what they did, what just basically what we're doing right now, what they would get like advice they would give or, you know, how to guide someone to the right position that they want. Um, so I think like joining, go to any events that you can because people are always nervous to go to those events and the career fairs, but they're really important. And it's not just so you can go and get a job. It's so you can actually network, you learn how to speak to people, you know, you, you learn about other companies and people's opinions on it and culture. So that's like really important. If you just, you know, kind of stay and you, you listen to what you hear, you don't really get the, the, all the information that you need. So I think going out and getting involved in, um, business fraternities is great. Um, for me, I Delaware was a 22,000 kid school and I'm used to it. So I grew up in California. So I was used to having eight to 20 kids with me my entire life. So my first day I walked into a 400 person lecture hall and I was like, what the heck? Because I was always the teacher's pet. I'm going to admit it. Like I totally was. All my teachers, they still like they literally sent me like virtual birthday cards like this year from high school but I never actually became close with any of my professors in college until probably last year when I went abroad because you are kind of like when you're at a big school you become like faceless like they don't know who you are and really make an effort to go and see them and for me like Yes, I have to make that effort because for me, like I was only taking four tests. We had no participation grades. They didn't round. Like there's no reason to talk to the teacher because I was already doing well in the class. So I kind of just went throughout college without meeting my professors. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. But once I did, the ones I did become close with was um, I studied abroad last winter. I was working in a hospital in the Caribbean and I became really close with one of my professors and doing small things like that, like going abroad with them or going on service trips or um, just establishing relationships where you get to see them so frequently like that. I became really close with her and I actually just won like the School of Nursing Award from my college just because I would really gotten to know her and she got to know who I was and my character, which ended up being great for me. So like, don't really stress about it if your teachers don't know you because Sometimes they don't have to know you. You only need to know them if you're not doing very well and you need the help, is my take on college, at least. Yeah, I agree. I mean, you don't, yeah, it's not something like you don't need to, and maybe you don't even want to like try hard to network with your professors or whatnot, because um, I, I think they're, they're almost a little easier to talk to than high school teachers in a way just because 
for me at least, a lot of my professors were part-time. So they have this whole other life outside of school uh, as far as you know, their careers that they're going, just different hobbies. And um, I had a lot of professors that were really interesting that I didn't realize until later on. Um, so, you know, it just takes a, a question, you know, what do you, what do you do outside of uh, teaching or um, I don't know, just, you know, BSing with your teachers is, is the way to go for just social friendly connections is what you want. Yeah, that's great. That's awesome advice. Um, okay, so uh, do you live in the dorms? Do you live at home or do you live in um, off campus housing? And what has that experience been like for you guys? Uh, I can go on, on this one. Um, so my first two years, I lived on campus. Uh, my first year, I was in a double. My sophomore year, I was in a triple. Um, and at least like at Bard, it's like a very, very small school. Um, there's not a ton of, there's not even really a ton of dorms, but my years on campus, definitely, definitely not as fun as being off campus. I feel like you're kind of uh, constrained a little bit. I, it also, I mean, our dorms at least were pretty bad. Like my, my double was very, very small. Um, and I think moving off campus is just better. just like, like living wise, like kind of like a little bit like what Matt said before, a little bit like being your own boss is like, it's easier, at least like for me when it was kind of just me and I don't have to worry about like kids running up and down the halls um, or like having to like walk like, like a different bathroom if I was like busted one night. Um, so I think like living on campus, while I definitely appreciate the experience, I definitely prefer like kind of that more like adult experience of like kind of having your own own place and not really having to worry about uh, anything else. Yeah, I've um, <clears throat> for the first two years I've lived uh, in dorms. Um, I'm going to live in an apartment uh, next year, but um, first year in dorms. And I guess the only way to say it is like real communal living. You really got to like live as like a beehive. I don't know, like you share like bathrooms, you share showers. So like everything you do or your neighbor does, you kind of both have to live with. So it's, it takes a lot of patience for sure. Um, but also it make you make some really good connections too. Cause you're kind of forced to really be in a spot with a bunch of people. Like you'll gossip about other people who you don't like, and you'll make friends with like people you do like. Um, but it's, it's definitely interesting. I think it's worth the experience. A lot of the time people talk about how bad some dorms are. And I, I do agree. Um, but it is kind of like a life lesson to get along with it and kind of suck it up, but, um, it's fun. Definitely, definitely good experience. I think it definitely depends on your school because I know my school was like, nobody lived in the dorms. Like after freshman year, it was like, as soon as you could get out, you were out like of the dorms because they were just so terrible. I remember like there'd be like broccoli in the shower and like throw up everywhere all the time and there were no windows in the bathroom and you'd go in and there's no air conditioning so you couldn't even see in the mirrors because they'd be all foggy and it was just disgusting so it's really school dependent because I know my little sister it was her first year at UNE this year and I think she has to live in the dorms forever and I was like that's terrible because I had the time of my life as soon as I moved off campus you can have as many people over as you want you can do whatever you want it's but that also brings its challenges because then again, the time management thing and like if your friends are having a party and I'm upstairs and I have a test tomorrow morning, it's like, guys, oh, like, can you turn the music down? It gets like irritating. But again, it's like just always live with someone that you can live well with. You, you might want to live with your friends, but if you know you don't get along with your friends, don't live with them. Living with people is very different than like being friends with people. And you all touch on that brought up an interesting thing about choosing roommates, especially for freshman year. How did you choose your roommate? Was it random? Did you live with somebody you knew? Can you all talk about that briefly? Yeah, I can go. Um, so I've had the worst roommate experience ever. Every every single year, I just kind of, you know, I, I actually like make stories for them because like, oh, I'll put it this way. Freshman year, I had the rower. Um, so rowing's like very big at St. Joe's 
And it's, it's also a, a huge sport because it takes a lot of your time up. So 4.30 in the morning, she would wake up, you know, it'd be terribly loud. She would come back, you know, at, at say like eight in the morning, come back in loud. Then she like, you know, she wouldn't shower. She wasn't clean. Like she was just using all my stuff. So I've had like roommates like that the entire experience. Um, so I've kind of moved around a lot, but also, you know, some other friends that I've met along the way, um, have joined the mix. So I ended up with really, really good roommates, but I found the rower freshman year on Facebook. We were, you know, we all posted something, um, like a bio about it. And all I'm going to say is get to actually know them. Don't just say, Oh my gosh, they seem so nice. I'm going to room with them because not everyone turns out the way that you think they're going to turn out. Um, so definitely get to know them. Uh, Facebook's really good to introduce themselves. I think a lot of colleges do that. Um, you know, stalk them a little bit, <laughs> look at their Instagram, you know, whatever you can do. And then um, maybe hang out with them one time. And that's the best way to do it. Lindsay, real quick, what do you think are the most important questions to ask somebody when you say get to know them? Like, what do you yeah. think are the important questions to ask when you're going to live with somebody? Well, definitely um, athlete. Are you an athlete or not? Because it's time consuming. It's early in the morning or it's late at night. It's weird hours. You know, my roommate kind of restricted me from having friends in the room because she wanted to sleep at a certain time or she did her homework different than I did. Um, that like schedules, like what's your major, you know, what do you want to be like heavily involved in, um, clubs and everything? Because a lot of the times, a lot of people will have people come back with them or have meetings in the room. Like it's, it's, it, 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 you, your schedules have to be similar if you want it to be easy flowing, put it that way, because other than that, it's just, it's hard to mix, especially just going into college freshman year. Um, cause you know, when you're at home, you're used to like, you know, your siblings, they have their own things to do, but when you're at college and you're directly living with someone and you're sharing, you know, a 10 by 10 space, it's a lot different because you're on top of each other all the time. I would, I would also say, um, if you're not prepared to like pick a roommate, cause sometimes I've known people who have picked a roommate and they thought they were going to be great friends going in and it, and then they weren't after a few weeks and that kind of like created even an even worse friendship. Um, so sometimes going random has its like benefits because you're in a room with someone who you both know you didn't pick each other. So you're kind of both like in it together. So if you don't end up being friends, then you're kind of equally, you understand it. But then if you do end up being friends, it's even better because it's like a random get together. It's like, oh my God, we were random. And now we're great friends. So. Yeah, like um, I know, like I played uh, soccer in college. And so I got paired up with another kind of soccer team. At first I was like, oh, this is great. Like we'll have the same schedule. Um, we were both economics majors. Um, he was actually from New Jersey as well. So I was like, oh, this is like great. We're going to be like great friends. Um, and then after, I don't know, like, maybe like a month or two, like, like still when soccer was going on, I was like, Oh, this kid's like him and I are not going to get along. He's not really like a good guy. Um, and I kind of didn't really accept that fact. I was like, Oh no, I'll get it better. It'll be fine. Um, kind of the idiot that I am, I committed to like living with him for sophomore year. Um, and by that point it was at least on my end, I thought I kind of was making it pretty obvious. Like you're not a good person. I don't really want to hang out with you. Like kind of try to like distance myself. Um, and he didn't really get that. So for like a majority of like sophomore year, it was this weird thing where he's like, was trying to hang out and like ask me to do stuff. I'm just like, dude, like you're not, not a good person. Like you're not a good guy. I don't really want to hang out. Um, and then it kind of created the thing where like, once he kind of caught on, then there was like a bunch of friction and he kind of flipped out this one time. Luckily it was like towards the end of sophomore year. So I'd have to like live with him afterwards. Um, but like sometimes I think like basically more of the stories like really get to know who you're living with um, and kind of like understand if you're going to be like a match or like if you're going to like enjoy living with them if they're like a clean person or stuff like that because like if you don't or if you just think it'll get better and like ignore the red flags it's, it's going to be a long two years if you you know accidentally commit. Just quickly too I think that they mentioned a good point that going random sometimes can be a good thing because I feel like a lot of people go into college looking for you know their perfect match um, but you'll see a lot of times that you're going to become friends with people you never ever thought you were going to become friends with um, and those are the people that are going to be your best friends through it all um, so 
I know a lot of people that went ran random and they're like, this is terrible. Um, and towards the end, they loved, like they were so close to their roommates and some people don't get along, but you know, they deal with each other and they're mature about it. But when you go in you kind of pick your perfect someone, it doesn't really always turn out perfect. So just be careful with that and don't be, you know, don't feel obligated just to go and find a person on Facebook. It's good to go random too. Yeah, I think that that was a really good point. And I wish I had heard that before because what I had done was I went on Facebook as most girls do and stalked every single person in the world. And I saw that one girl was my best friend from high school's cousin's best friend. So I decided that I would live with her. She ended up being a nut job. Like she was like, she would like steal my tests and like put cheat sheets in like calculators. And like, I went to borrow her calculator cause mine like broke. And it was just like such a terrible, terrible experience. That I was so paranoid my entire freshman year cause I thought she was like out to get me. But like also the issue with that was I was a nursing major and the nursing program is so small because there's, I think there was 200 of us. And then like it dropped to 130 after people failed out. But she like, and I did everything together because I wanted a nursing major because I wanted someone that would be on the same schedule as me. I think my biggest advice is to not choose someone because they're going to be on the same schedule as you because it was too much. I was with her 24 seven and she was like scary and like stalker ish. So it was a really bad experience because I couldn't get away from her. And then that inhibited me making friends because I couldn't sit with other people in the class because she would like sit next to me. And if I tried to sit like and talk to someone else, she would like she would, like tell me not to speak and stuff. And it was just crazy. She was just crazy. But I think it's good to get someone that's gonna be like a similar workload, but not someone you're gonna see constantly. So like if you're gonna be like a health in the healthcare field, like maybe like go for someone exercise science, or if you're gonna be like math, go with someone that's economics or so that you have like your own world too. You don't wanna be with someone 24 seven because you will want to kill them and it will be crazy. That's all really good advice. <laughs> um, sorry for those experiences that you guys had. <laughs> um, okay, so next question. Are any of you guys, um, or did any of you guys have a job while you were in college and was it on campus or off campus? And what was your experience like balancing you know, that? Um, I worked uh, weekends uh, delivering pizza this past semester, which um, it was kind of nice working on the weekends just because like obviously I didn't have to like rush back home to get to my classes, but also I really didn't have a whole lot of time um, to like a lot big chunks of time for studying or like sitting down and just like plowing through my homework. Um, but I think that like with the right amount of time management and making sure that you get your stuff done for school before you go or after you go to work, it's definitely doable and it's really useful because you know you need money in college. Yeah. I, uh, oh, <laughs> go ahead. You can go ahead, Lindsay. If you all right. Um, yeah. So since my sophomore year internship, they actually asked me to continue part time through school. So I was working 15 hours a week, um, actually up until now, it just ended, let's see, June 1st. So yesterday, um, because I start my new internship um, June 9th, which is next Wednesday. Um, so I what, what was the question again? I'm sorry. Now, now I'm getting off track. Did you uh, hold a job um, during yeah. college and what did that, how did that balance look like? Yeah. So again, just from the beginning, it's time management. It really helped me just to be able to, you know, since it was so flexible, it was remote. So I could work for my laptop at school, um, which was really great. I got paid. Uh, everything um, worked out well. It was, I was able to go around my classes and work an hour here, an hour there. But that's, again, going back to time management. Since classes, you know, are sporadic throughout the day, it's not just an eight to three kind of thing. Um, you have to figure out when you can actually sit down for an hour and work on something. And especially, I mean, I work on like claims operations. So it's, you have, when you start a claim, you kind of got to have to finish the claim. Um, so you can't be like, you know, a minute here, a minute there, because it times you. So I think working through college is really good. Um, and I'm probably going to do it 
through my next semester as well. So. Yeah, I would say definitely work in college. Um, one, because you're, you're going to need the money. And two, there's really like, there's no better place with so many different resources and so many different people. Like for example, I worked my junior and senior year for uh, a, one of the finance professor. I was a finance major, one of the professors in the department as like a research assistant. And it was all remote, you log your own hours. Um, and, and it was like really, it was challenging, but really good stuff uh, to talk about um, on an interview post college too, for sure. Uh, I say like working is important, not, I wouldn't say unless you really need to, but I wouldn't go and work at like a McDonald's or something off campus that because you're, you're in college and you have so many of these resources and there's so many opportunities that you, you, you should make the most of them. Um, and teachers are always looking for research assistants or uh, different like, I don't know, if you work like a, a fundraising events or different things like that um, are, are better than just going and grinding a minimum wage like off campus job or something like that. But I would say definitely work and look for the, those jobs that can better you professionally. You, you can put something on your resume because you'll find them. You'll find those jobs on at school. Yeah, that's great. Um, so tell us a little bit about what it was like at your school um, to access support services. So whether that's doctors at health centers or counselors um, in the counseling centers, what is it um, like to access those supports at your schools? At my school, they have, um, I think, I forget what it's called exactly, but it's like uh, you can text or you can go in for mental health services. I've had a few friends that went in at like any any time of day, like a few people like middle of the night had to go in to talk about stuff. And um, I guess just don't be afraid to go and do it. Like no one thinks less of you if you're going and um, asking for help. Um, people at college don't talk as much either. So don't be worried about like, rumor spreading or anything like your mental health is the first thing to um, take priority because uh, freshman year is definitely stressful and it's worth talking to someone because the school puts a lot of money into all the f sources uh, and resources, I guess. So don't be afraid. Go for it. They're here to help. Um, yeah. That's a great point, Matt. And I'll just throw in a little extra here because sometimes, uh, you know, our students have a lot of supports when they're in high school. And when they graduate and they're going off to college, they think it's going to be a fresh start and everything's going to be great. And they don't need the support that they had when they were in high school, but it is a big transition. It's a lot of change that you're going to encounter. You're going to be away from a lot of those other supports that you have in your life. And, you know, it's important to know how to access those that help when you need it, um, because a lot of times you might not think you're going to need something, but you do. So even if you think you'll, you'll never use it ever, it's important to know where those resources are and how to access them and, um, you know, encourage your people that you that are around you also to use those resources, because it really makes a big difference um, in getting that help when you need it and not waiting too long. Yeah, go ahead. No, yeah, I was just gonna say too, something that's good to keep in mind is like having a mentor is really important. I think it's really important for anyone. Um, I mean, personally, like I didn't seek for one. I kind of found one just through, you know, friend and socializing, um, but even just like a reliable friend, you might not feel comfortable going and, you know, going to a big school and finding some random person you've never heard of in your life and talking to them about, you know, everything that's going on. Um, so as you like make connections and you make friends, just keep each other reliable because you're always going to find that one person that just can help you through things um, and keep things, you know, just between you and them. Um, so definitely maybe, you know, just like Look, look for a mentor or people that you know you can trust and they don't you don't have to be best friends but you can rely on it's really important 
Yeah, those are all really good points. And I think, you know, similar to what Mr. Squarsha said, like that should be one of the first things that you do when you get to school because you want to familiarize yourself with where to go. I mean, even if it's just the health center, I mean, you're going to get a cold at some point, you know, need to go see a doctor at some point for things. So it's good to familiarize yourself with that. So when you're in the moment, when it's actually happening, you don't have to look for it at that point. You actually know where to go. Um, yeah, those are all really awesome points. Um, so did you or anyone that you know uh, change your majors and how did that work out? What was the, what was that experience like for either you or your friend? Um, I didn't change my major, but one of my best friends, um, who went to Voorhees, she changed her major, I think, five times, and now she's going to be, um, she's going to be, uh, what did you just call it, spider, a spider at, um, Richmond, she's going to law school there now, um, but she did, she changed her major, I think, first she went in, and she was undecided, then she was pre-med, then she was, like, marketing, then she was anthropology, criminal justice and education, like all these different majors that kept switching and now she's going to law school. So a lot of people get really stressed and they don't think that they have time or they're not gonna be able to graduate if they keep switching their majors. But ultimately like you don't wanna study something or stick with something that you're not gonna be happy with because you're paying probably like close to half a million dollars for this education. Like you want to be doing, this is something you're gonna be doing the rest of your life and it is a complete waste of time if you are just miserable. So, but also I think there's something to be said about sticking out at the beginning. I was um, saying earlier, like I had applied to 15 colleges, got into all of them and each school I had applied to a different major because I had no idea what I wanted to do. And I just ended up going to Delaware because I was gonna have no loans and it ended up as a nursing major. I had no idea if I'd like it and now I love it. and I worked in the COVID intensive care unit all winter and that's what I want to do for the rest of my life. So I think that in the beginning you might not like what you're doing but that's because the first year you're doing general classes you're not really hands-on yet but once you really put time in and you kind of just seek out opportunities to see what it's actually like in the real world rather than classes I think that you can be happy with what you're doing. So I'm not really sure if this necessarily counts as switching a major, but um, for TCNJ and I think a lot of other schools, if you want to be an education major, you need to do a major in your subject area. So for me, it's history, um, but I applied and went in as an undecided education major. So meaning I had like committed to being an education major, but not my um, like a subject area. And the process of getting into the uh, uh, history major was really simple. I just talked to um, my advisor and then the somebody in the history department and they sent me a form, I filled it out and it was really easy. So kind of don't be afraid of it because I, I know a lot of people, they don't wanna, you know, uh you know like rock the boat too much because i think it's gonna be really hard but for me at least it was really easy and straightforward yeah that's great um i actually miss course i don't know if you know this but i changed my major three times in my undergrad i um i started in education went on to social work and then landed in psychology um all kind of similar but the the process to do it um similar to what Bennett said, it's typically you'll just talk to your advisor about wanting to make that change. There's a form that you'll fill out to make that change. Um, and you get a lot of conversation through it about, you know, why you want to make that change and all that. And um, similar to what Meredith said, it's the rest of your life, you know, like you're choosing what you want to do with your life. So you want to make sure that it's something that you're confident in and um, don't be scared of it, is my advice. Don't be scared of changing your major if something's really pulling you in another direction. Um, yeah, I'm going to say just off of what you just said as well, that it's really important to kind of stick to who you are in college because college determines what you want to do in life. Um, and I think a lot of people, um, even with choosing colleges, you know, in high school, I feel like there was a lot of um, bias or, you know, go to a big school or go to, you know, um, you know, a really good school. But like, what does a really good school mean to people or, you know, 
this school has this or this one has a great football team. I think it's really important just to stick to like, you know, what you want to do because you're going to find, you know, your friends and everything through that anyway. Um, I've had a lot of friends in, in college that have not been happy where they are, but they just pretend they are um, because they're afraid of other people saying, oh my gosh, you want to do art? Like you're artistic. Yeah. Like you're good at it. You, art isn't just, you know, drawing it's architecture or it's interior design and people make a lot of money from that. So I think that it's important to just stick to who you are and what you really want to do because you're only going to be better than that person that judged you anyway. So, you know, just, that's all I'm going to say is do what you want to do. And if you want to go around and change your major one or two times, because, you know, you just want to see and play the field a little bit, that's perfectly fine. Um, just, just be aware of credits. That's it. Awesome. All right. So my next question is what kinds of student clubs or organizations are you involved in? And with that, what kind of activities do you do with those clubs and ad what advice do you have about joining them? I feel like most people do the same thing. They set up a career fair. You're like first week as a freshman and you go because everyone tells you sign up for all the clubs. I signed up for every single club. I still get emails and I graduated this weekend from like the yoga club and I've never done yoga in my life. So don't just sign up for random things like sign up for things that you actually care about because if you actually take the time to invest in those things, like you're gonna have fun and you're gonna meet people you actually like get along with and that you like. And like a great thing to do is like the first day when you do see all those clubs, pick like a few that you're actually gonna invest in and do it with a friend, like someone that you met like on your floor, be like, oh my God, like that sounds so cool. Like I wanna do intramural volleyball. Like I, I like loved it in gym class. Like do you wanna sign up with me? And then you'll do it together then you'll have a friend like going in with it and you guys will get closer because you'll meet every day, like every Tuesday to go to that club. Like it's a great way to like network and make friends, but don't overextend yourself. I feel like a lot of people just sign up for a million clubs. Once you sign up for a million clubs, you lose that sense of responsibility of having to go to them because you're like, oh, like I can't go to all of these every single day. So like just pick some that you're actually interested in. And I know a lot of schools have ones that like even if it's something you've never done before, like my school had like a, like a hiking club and like my family has hiked, but I've never done it with like people my age. So it's like, that'd be kind of cool. So like I signed up for it and I still get the emails and they'll send me links to like discounted trails and stuff that I can still go to now, which is pretty cool. So definitely like sign up for clubs, but don't sign up for random like things that you don't actually care about. Sign up for things that you're going to do and try and find someone who's doing them with you so that you have a buddy to go to them with. Yeah, I think this um, too, I personally wasn't in a sorority, but um, it's funny because Udell is actually my second choice. Um, and part of me wishes I went there for social a little bit because St. Joe's doesn't really have the biggest, like their sororities and their frats are super tiny. Um, but I did it for my major because they're third in the nation for risk management insurance. Um, but we didn't have a career or like a, a fair for, you know, all the clubs that, um, that, that you or that St. Joe's had. Um, so we kind of had to hear it from people or, you know, we had like one person that would come into a class and would say, you know, join this club or this, this, and that. So definitely, you know, look around because Mary's right that you do find people from there or you find like later on that somehow, oh my gosh, you were, you know, the yoga, you were a yoga person that came and talked to me. You're, you were, you were great. Let's, let's like meet up. You know what I mean? So um, I would definitely say look for those clubs and stuff to get interested or to get, um, um, to join because you're going to meet a lot of people and you're going to learn a lot, um, and have fun because it's something you need before you go out of college and you have to start your real life. Um, Matthew, going off of like organizations, I know you mentioned that you were part of Greek life. Do you want to speak on that a little bit? Yeah. Uh, I'm in a fraternity. I'm in Lambda Chi. Um, yeah, a lot of fun. I mean, there's some of my best friends. I like the group of guys is amazing. Um, 
I really, I feel really close to them. I'm open with all of them. And it's, I guess maybe my only advice is don't, if you're going to come to college and you're going to go to a frat party or a sorority event, or probably then at a fraternity house, and you're gonna say, oh, this is awesome. These are my best friends after like your first week. But you really have to visit like as many as you can and diversify yourself going to different ones because you're gonna, it's gonna seem like the best fraternity ever, the first one you go to, but then you'll go to another one and then another one. And then you realize that this group is a lot more to who I am versus other groups. Um, Cause you can really like, like party with a lot of people, but there's only like a group of guys that you're really gonna be close with and friends with. And that's the fraternity that I think that you should join is people that you're close with and um, kind of like-minded, keep academics in, in mind too. Um, I think all fraternities say they're academic fraternities, but in reality, there's certain ones that are a lot more academic compared to other ones. Um, and also, I guess I'd say there's a lot of leadership opportunities involved in fraternities as well. There's a lot of jobs kind of behind the scene that people have to do. People have to deal with the, the money involved, um, uh, recruitment, um, uh, and just like stuff like t-shirt chair, like making t-shirts for the fraternity. There's so many little things that you can kind of step up and find fulfillment in and um, kind of, it's basically like, a, it's basically like another job if you really um, devote yourself to it. And I think you can really, um, you can have a lot of fun, but also you can have a lot of personal fulfillment in um, fraternities as well. How did you get the uh, full story about the, the different fraternities when you're shopping around to figure out what's what with each one? How did how did you get that information? Just asking around, talking to people? Yeah, I it's a, it's a lot of talking to people and it's a lot of um, the people that you know. But um, there's during the first week for at least for Richmond, there's uh, it's rushing in the, the spring. So all of the fall, they allow you to. Um, uh, like visit a bunch of different fraternities. I know some schools are uh, fall rushes, which is like you just join and you rush immediately without knowing people. But um, definitely, if you're not worried about it, just kind of wait a little longer and then rush later because it's kind of about going with your friends to different places and kind of hearing from other people. And I think the most important is just kind of actually visiting and being there and seeing how it is on a like person to person basis. Um, Cause you can hear one thing from some person, but actually visit and have a completely different opinion compared to a different person. Cause everyone's different. So. I was in a sorority for a hot second. I think that a lot of people, or at least for me, all my friends from high school and all my friends from home were all in sororities. They're like, it's the best thing Like you have to do it. So I did it and I realized it wasn't for me real quickly. I think that like it's not for everyone like in high school like I love like people and I love doing things but for me I wasn't about being like sororities are just different I wasn't about being in like a group of girls where they tell you what to wear and what to do it's just not who I am some people really enjoy it my best friend is in Alabama a Greek row in one of those mansions lives for it loves it for me it was just I was in it for like a year and then I was just like, this is just not my thing. And that's okay too. I still am really good friends with those girls that I met initially. So sometimes like it's nice to try things and you can always like leave, disaffiliate, not be a part of it anymore. And then I still have my friends from it. Yeah, I agree with Mary. I kind of did the whole process. Um, I rushed and everything, um, you know, went around and saw, you know, what um, sororities I liked. So one thing I would say is, I think a lot of people have this big stigma that it's, you know, you have to be in a sorority at a certain school to fit in, um, or you have to be in a certain club at a school to fit in, which is totally like unrealistic. Um, a lot of the people um, that I met when I rushed uh, are still my best friends. And it's great because like Mary said, you know, I'm not the one that's like, okay, formal's coming up. Everyone has to wear a red dress. Like I hate that stuff. Um, and I find it very clicky, which I just don't migrate to very well. I don't like that at all. Um, so um, as much as like, you know, they do a lot of fun things. I still get invited to things because, you know, um, they'll say you can bring your friends or, you know, babe in a bottle, you bring like one of your friends or you can bring a boyfriend, girlfriend, whatever. Um, 
but yeah, definitely it wasn't for me either. And I realized that quickly before I even joined and made my deposit, thankfully, but, um, for some people it is, and just, you know, be mindful of like, you know, when you rush to that, um, you go with a good sorority and, or a good frat with people that you like, and not just because you know someone. Yeah. And I would say, I, I was never in Greek life. I think Mary and Lindsay are pretty dead on with it. Like in school, you're, you're going to be friends with who you want to be friends with. And if, if there's somebody that's like, that acts a little weird to you because you're not in Greek life, you don't want to be friends with them anyway. So I, like, at least for me, I was, uh, I was friends with, and I lived with uh, people for sophomore, junior, senior year that were all in, in frats, all different frats too. Um, so it's, uh, you, you're going to be who, who, friends with who, who you want to be friends with at the end of the day. It doesn't really, it's not a necessity in college. I know that's kind of a stereotype. If you want to, if you're a social person, you, you get into Greek life, but that's not true at all. Awesome. Um, so my next question for you is, um, were you ever homesick during your first year of college and how did you get over that? I wasn't really homesick. I mean, I, I, I went to college in New Jersey anyways, I was an hour away, but I just remember, I still remember the first day and my parents dropped me off and left. And I was like, this is, this is it. I'm just, it was just a very weird feeling. It was on my own. And um, the, the thing that's important to keep in mind is, especially when you're going into a freshman year is everyone's on the same page. So you walk into the freshman dorm on the first day and, and like everybody's got their door open and uh, people just want to meet people. So it's going to be the easiest time to make friends and and this and that and and doing that kind of keeps the you know homesickness out of the way yeah I'm also like a big believer of like things you know like college is um the next step of your life so you kind of like you need to let it happen um you can't force things obviously if you know you go away to college and you don't like how far you are away from home because you know you're homesick like we're talking about but I think that it was, it was nice to see everyone in the same dorm, like a communal dorm um, together. Cause like just Brian just said is, you know, everyone's going through at the same time. So I would say, stick it out. I would say, try not to go, you know, home too much um, because the more you're there, the more involved you get, the more connections you make. Um, so make the best of it while you can. All right, great. Um, so the, our next question for you is, um, what do you and your friends like to do for fun on the weekends? And I think this goes without saying, but please make your answers school appropriate. So I was always a big sporty girl. Um, uh, I play lacrosse. Um, high school. For me, my school... Way, oh, to, yeah. way to go, Mary. Way to go. <laughs> um, yeah, but I was always like a sporty girl in high school. So I think for me, um, besides, you know, all the stuff that you guys know about that we're not going to talk about, um, I, I, I like to play sports. So we always, you know, um, you know, throw the lacrosse ball or do stuff like that. Um, Philly is a huge city too, and it's fun. So just touring, it's cool to get to know it. I'm so sad because in a semester, I won't be in the location that I love. Like, you know, there's so much stuff to do in the city. Um, so just like touring, getting to know like where you are in different locations is fun. And uh, like going out to eat with my friends is fun and doing stuff like that besides, you know, getting in trouble. Um, for me, I feel like because of the pandemic, I had to get creative with what I was doing on the weekends since in Delaware, it was insanely strict. Um, everything was basically shut down. You could only have four people sitting at a table. And obviously I had more than three friends. So it was hard um, this past year 
but it was also kind of like a blessing because I started getting into other things. I started running um, consistently. Like I ended up going from running zero in my life to a half marathon in three weeks. So like I going where you go to school, location is so important for me. Like the backyard to my townhouse was a huge trail that went on for miles. And I ran all the way like through Pennsylvania. And there's like a reservoir next to my school. My school was also only an hour from Baltimore, an hour, like 40 minutes from DC, 45 from Philly. So we'd go into the cities, like different cities, just explored a lot. I visit a lot of other friends too at other schools. I went to Rowan this year, Westchester. Um, I've gone to JMU, like all these different schools. It's really fun to visit your friends from high school too. Like a lot of people think you're never gonna see them again. It's not the case. It makes it more fun having being able to road trip and go see people. Um, but definitely, I think an important part about college is not being confined to your campus, which is hard if you don't have a car. But once you get your car to school, it's really cool just to be able to explore the outside area as well. Yeah, so at, at Bard is a little bit like different. We kind of were confined to the campus uh, to a pretty big degree because like I think you can't have a car on campus till like your soft or second semester sophomore year. Um, so like, when we first got there as freshmen, it was kind of just us, like the thousand acres, like campus, and then like our dorms. So what my friends and I would kind of do, um, aside from the other things, uh, is that we would kind of have like watch parties for like bigger sporting events. Um, so like any like the for like the basketball playoffs, we would like um, sometimes rent out like classrooms, get a projector up, and, like watch it together there. Uh, if someone like couldn't have it at the dorm for whatever reason, um, and then there was actually like a like it was definitely like projector room like at the campus center where we would there was like a club that uh, some other friends started where we would watch like the soccer games like Premier League soccer games like every Saturday. So that was like another thing that was kind of there. Um, but that's, you know, kind of mainly if you're just like into sports, but that was one thing that at least like for us was pretty easy, like hanging out alternative to just the, the usual. Awesome. Uh, so you guys touched on this next one a little bit, um, but just if you want to add anything, what do you feel like was the best way for you to meet people or make new friends, you know, aside from like the clubs and organizations you talked about? What are some other ways that you like really connected with people and made friends? Yeah, for me, it was sports. Um, I was a big lacrosse player in high school and I was looking for, you know, like going into college, I wanted to like continue playing it because I wasn't going to play um, D1. So for me, it ended up not being as competitive as I wanted it to, but, you know, getting involved, like Mary said, like, you know, she, uh, intramural like um volleyball like little things like that and those things are fun so and like it's fun to play with people that don't know what they're doing too because everyone like laughs and jokes and has a good time and it's away from you know academics and um that's how you meet other people too yeah I don't want to say like to add any pressure or anything to like incoming freshmen but being a freshman is a big opportunity to meet people just like I was saying before because everyone's on the same page and you'll you'll never meet like more people that are more friendly all in one spot um just because people are trying to you know kind of get established and have a group of, of people or whatnot but uh at TCNJ we had and all schools kind of do this we had like uh, floor um, icebreaker stuff and it seemed like cheesy at first but honestly it, you meet a couple of people and then just start messing around and it, like I, four or five of the people on my floor ended up being you know some of my best friends um, so it's a, it's a big opportunity being a freshman meeting people yeah I definitely agree with Ryan I know like the first <clears throat> like two weeks like going to school like being a freshman they had like a bunch of like a bunch of activities like icebreakers like that or just like oh like you know the dorm's gonna go to here for like this event um and I, I'll be honest I definitely slept through a bunch of them uh which I definitely shouldn't have looking back on it um just because like the couple that I did go to like towards the end I was like oh wow like you know I'm meeting a lot of people it's a lot more fun like when I kind of can go out and like talk to someone and like not just be in my room doing nothing the entire day 
Um, so yeah, like definitely just like take advantage of like those little opportunities because again, they seem kind of corny. Um, but you know, I definitely think a lot of good can come out of them. Yeah. Don't be too cool for the icebreakers. Show up to the icebreakers. Um, so Bennett, having just finished your freshman year, how, what do you think was the biggest way for you that you made connections this year? Um, well, I was actually online, so it was kind of hard, but you really can't discount the power of social media for that type of thing, just because everybody's on social media and all throughout the summer, even just um, off like uh, the Facebook, uh, sorry, the Facebook group. I just like met people from there and was just talking to them online. And then um, also a lot of the times people will make like group chats for the classes like the, you know, we did that in high school too, but like these are obviously a lot bigger and you know you just talk to people and they're just kind of growing your circle a bit great um so have you ever had moments that you felt like college was just too hard um and what did you do when you entered into those moments um for me my first year I was taking all the general like healthcare classes so I was in orgo chem bio anatomy physiology nutrition and a nursing class all at once and it was finals week and I had an exam every single day in a row and I'm not the kind of person that can study for more than one day like out like in advance so I felt so overwhelmed because it was like non-stop test cumulative test after test after test. So I felt super, super overwhelmed. But the best thing that I did was I kind of just reminded myself, like, I can only do the best that I can. And I kind of just need to block out my time, like two hours, I'll study for this, then I'll take a break, then two hours, I'll study for that. It's kind of, for me, it was the schoolwork was the hardest part at times my freshman year. But then after you get adjusted, and you meet friends that can help you study, and um, it becomes like a social activity too, where you're like, oh, like, let's go get lunch and then like review this. So that was the hardest part, but I figured um, with time, it was more so just a me and time management problem. Yeah, um, finals for my first semester, I had to, all, all my finals were essays. So I had to write about it was probably like 40 to 50 pages like with all of my essays in total for like my finals uh and just the way that I did it was just taking it step by step you know like realizing that I'm not going to sit down and write all all my essays all at once so you know I had to take it part by part piece by piece make sure that I was just doing the best I could and just kind of letting it go at that yeah, for me, um, I was taking kind of like Mary said, I was taking a lot of my core classes at once. So like property and casualty, which is like super dry material, but like all memorization, um, you know, uh, I was in differential calculus, um, which was like calc one, two and three combined in one course. So I was in a lot of like heavy material classes. Plus, I was also taking for insurance or CPCU exams. Um, and I was trying to get a lot of my certifications done and, you know, finals and everything came at the same time. Um, so I think it's good to note that you can only do the best that you can. And one test score isn't going to determine who you are as a person or, you know, how well you do for the rest of your uh, college career. So just don't be so hard on yourself because everyone does bad at certain times. And you can only, you know, if you put in the effort that you know you could put in, then that's all you can do. I think uh, one thing that I also like always told myself that I'm sure some of it was definitely lying uh, is like it's something I kind of like think of myself like no matter how hard I would have for like you know final week or you know midterms or whatever I would kind of just rationalize it with like you know I've definitely gone through something probably worse like there's definitely been like you know sophomore year it must have been worse I'm just not like remembering like being in the moment I remember like you know, certain assignments like kept me up to like, you know, three, four in the morning that I was doing. Um, and just kind of thinking about it like that way, like, you know, like you've been through something probably worse, like you kind of know you're going to get through it. And like kind of what everyone's kind of said, like one, you know, one score that isn't exactly where you want it, isn't going to, you know, ruin your life. And kind of just putting everything, uh, you know, in perspective. Yeah, I couldn't agree more with John. For me, it was like, 
it was it was like clockwork where at like three to four days uh before finals every semester I was like yep I hate myself and then after like a few days after finals I was like it really wasn't that like thinking back it wasn't that bad um so when you're in the moment you do tend to exaggerate things I think and the best way to to just you know stay in it and keep the anxiety levels low is um just just break it up you know keep a balance um it, you have a big test do an hour of studying here break you know watch I don't know watch tv go outside uh, go work out go eat and do it again you know you have time you, you and that's the biggest thing with with college is you you have the time so it's not a matter of that it's just how you use it yeah I guess overall your your work doesn't define you as a student you as a student defines you as a student so if if something doesn't go your way which is going to happen like everyone messes up in college and there'll be one class or one assignment that you just totally bomb and it's fine because everyone has that and I think college is the time to have that have that experience and learn from that and build and um it'll make you a better student at the end of the day okay so the next question I have for you guys is um definitely I think a really important one to talk about so in in your opinion what do you think is one of the top reasons that freshmen are not successful in their first year of college? Um, I think at least my friends, a lot of them made the mistake freshman year, like go crazy. They didn't really study. And you have to remember that like your GP, it's the same as high school, your freshman GPA affects the rest of your your whole career and your whole life like you need to start strong because it's only going to get harder and if you just go in and you don't really care it ended up biting a lot of my friends who I just graduated with and they're having a hard time getting jobs because they might have done well an average like a three the last three years but freshman year they were failing all their classes and not really caring so I think it's really important and the biggest mistake people make is they're, they're just too consumed with all the fun and the excitement of college to actually invest in the real reason why you're there, which is to get a good ed education. And you're not gonna get a job if you don't like do well in your classes. And if you do get a job and you didn't do well in your classes, you're not gonna know what you're doing once you get the job, so. Kind of what Mary just said too. Um, I think like, the biggest thing that I saw as a freshman um, was people just struggling with determining like who they are, um, you know, and that like throws off like your sleep schedule, you know, your motivation to go out and meet people or, you know, going back to the homesick kind of thing. Um, you don't want to get out there. You don't want to like, you know, kind of start the next part of your life. Um, so I think that was one of the things that people struggle with a lot. Um, and my advice would just be, I said it before, like just to stick it out because everyone's going through the same kind of thing. Um, and, you know, we said this before, like your mental health is the most important thing and becoming who you are as an individual and responsibility is really important. So um, just make sure, you know, you don't disregard that and just focus purely on academics because you have to be healthy in order to, you know, do well. Yeah, I think, oh, you got it. Sure enough. Yeah. All right. Um, I guess maybe um, I lost my thought. Um, oh, putting um, putting too much pressure on yourself, I think, because you come out of high school, and I'm sure a lot of people are pretty successful at Voorhees because it's a great school and it does good. Um, but then you step up into college, and academics are harder, and you just have to kind of deal with life on your own, and you put a lot of pressure to have that same kind of success rate in college, and you just gotta understand that sometimes um it takes a little like you gotta get the gears going a little bit and people get frustrated about that and i think it's natural but you gotta understand that it's just part of the whole college process yeah i was gonna say uh, i think mary really hit the nail on the head um in terms of like some people like almost like falling in love with like, like the college culture and like oh like the partying and stuff like that um 
And I got a friend who he played on the soccer team with me freshman, sophomore year, and then ended up transferring uh, to Moravian. And I actually just saw him. He was at our house for graduation the other day. And, like, looking at, like, who he kind of was and, like, definitely kind of, like, his, like, demeanor, like, how he went about things. Like, freshman, sophomore year, he kind of got in. I wouldn't say, like, the wrong crowd because they definitely, like, I was friends. I was, like, friends with some of the kids in that, that friend group, but they were definitely the kids that, you know, wouldn't really show up to a ton of classes, kind of would just be sulking in the room, kind of like, you know, wake up at like two and then like be out till five. Uh, so I feel like, you know, falling victim to a little bit of like, oh, you have all this like time, you know, you're kind of responsible for yourself. No one's really telling you what to do. And just like taking advantage, like people that like really did too much of like the, like, they're really just like partying and stuff like that. I feel like freshman year, you know, I've seen a ton of kids like that that kind of like fall down that path. And then like, you know, now when I talked to him the other day, he was like designing like, like an app. And I'm like, if you would have stayed like at bar and I highly, highly doubt you would have ever had like the motivation like to do that type of stuff. Um, so I think just kind of like keeping like your head on your shoulders, just like, all right, like knowing what your priority are, priorities are, realizing like, yes, it's college, yes, you can have fun, but like there's a balance in that. You really can't, you don't want to like be burning the, you know, the candles at both ends or do it like the same or something like that. But just, you know, kind of stay in the moment, like don't really try to do like too much of like just studying or just partying, kind of finding like that balance. Okay, so um, the last question that I have for you guys is, um, what is one thing that you wish someone had told you before you left for college? Um, I really wish that like somebody told me the importance of going to like office hours and making sure you really understand your material with your professor. Because I didn't really go um, my first semester, but in the second semester, like my grades just drastically improved after I started going to office hours. So like make sure that you have that line of communication open with your professors. Something pretty similar to that is um, in high school, you don't really email your teachers as much as you do in college. Like, don't be afraid to email them. It's like part of their job is is reading your email, reading your emails and um, responding to them. So definitely keep an open line of communication, like he was saying, with office hours and sending emails. And um, don't feel like you're burdening your teacher by asking for extra help because it's part of the process. Yeah, um, I I would say that, and everyone always says this, but I kind of wish I listened to it a little more, maybe. But um, it's not it's not what you know; it's who you know. And you know, you can be the hardest worker, and uh, you know, have a 4.0 GPA, and still have trouble getting a job out of college, which makes no sense, but it's how it is. Um, and at the same time, somebody that has you know, a, a connection with um, an upperclassman and they're working at some company and, and they slide right in with like a 3.0 GPA or something like that, which um, it, it can be frustrating, but you have to understand that, that it's, it's who you know, not what you know. And my, I mean, my teacher, one of my teachers would always say that you never trust somebody with a 4.0 GPA because, um, it's just it's just like a funny saying that they're they're trying a little too hard and at the end of the day getting a job is and interviewing with people they have to like you so you have to have different talking points you have to have done things outside of school that are exciting unique um so you know just just keep your your mind open to different opportunities and if you don't like it at least it could come up as a talking point down the road Yeah, for me, I would say kind of just what Ryan just said, not just about networking, but I mean, I've kind of said this already is like, I kind of wish I would have known that everyone was going to have this stereotype or everyone was going to try to be, you know, the best in their class or, you know, get straight A's or be on the Dean's list. And there's always going to be people like that. But my advice is just no, or I'm just going to say like, it's just know that everyone is struggling with things. Um, you know, you could have a 4.0 
student that has, you know, a rough family life or that is struggling with social stuff. Um, so my advice would just to be happy with you, who you are and really figure out who you are um, because grades don't determine, you know, the kind of person that you are, um, but you can determine the person that you become. So that would be um, something that I would say, just figure out who you are because this is, you know, the part of your life where you could have fun, do what you need to do, start your life, you know, and then the real world does come very quick, so. Um, I guess like one thing that is like pretty important that I feel like I might not have really recognized as much as like like a 19 year old as like a freshman is like everyone in college, Ryan kind of said before, uh, you know, everyone in college is kind of like going through at least like a somewhat similar process and that you guys, like everyone's, you know, right before they enter like the workforce or right before they enter essentially like, you know, like the real world, like the adult world. Um, so just like not really being afraid to, you know, sometimes talk about things that maybe you aren't completely comfortable with but like things that other people like around you might know a lot about and like might be able to help you out with um you know whether that be um you know if you're going through something like mentally or socially or if it could be you know like a, like a job opportunity if you know you have similar career interests i just feel like trying to like open yourself up a little bit more um is definitely something i like probably wish i would have done a little bit more uh just to kind of get like the most really out of college so i feel like if you like kind of just like confide to yourself and really like don't branch out and don't open up it's it's just going to be like tougher to kind of just like navigate and again like everyone's kind of going through the same you know tweener phase of like you're not really a kid but you're not like really an adult um you're just trying to navigate that like recognize that you have people around you that are all kind of going through a you know a similar-esque uh struggle For me, it, this wasn't really an issue that I had. I saw a lot of my friends. Um, I think a lot of people get that a lot of people put on like a facade on social media in today's world. Like I've seen that a lot with the degree below me. Um, they see that I mean, on their school this week, and you're like, like those people, yeah, and it can be hard. But you have to realize that what you see on camera isn't exactly what's going on in everyone's life. Everyone's struggling on their own friends and do things. You're not like alone with that. Um, you see the parts of people's lives that are they're struggling too in the beginning. Um, 